Welcome back to The Person Everyone Needs. I'm your host, Webb Hoggard, and I'm just kind of taking the next few weeks to tell you my story. We live in such a high-octane world today that it's kind of hard to even sit down with a cup of coffee and just tell your story. So I just wanted to, to keep, I don't know, if we could have a chance to sit down, I would love to just tell you what the Lord has done in my life. And so last week I told you largely about the influence my grandparents had in my life. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about my relationship with my parents. I, I mentioned last week that my life was changed when my parents got saved. I remember the transformation for my mom. We used to ride in the car together and we would sing to the top of our lungs, uh, Garth Brooks and Clint Black, and she was a country music person, and we would sing those songs with all of our hearts, and uh, I, my mom has always been the person that I could talk to the most, and she was one of those people that just really didn't judge even my most inner and crazy thoughts. Uh, she just really it would help me process through that. It's one of the reasons I, I, I love to process things today. I, I love meetings. <laughs> uh, I love to sit down with people and hear their ideas and then try to process all the way through the whole thing. And I think it's largely because of the relationship I had with my mom. She was very good at just listening, being empathetic, helping me work through things. And she's a quality time person. And so for her, it was always seen as quality time. And for me, I was just always refining the person that um, God wanted me to be, and because I, I wanted, I wanted to be the person that everyone needs. I wanted to become better, and she could see that when she got saved and graduated from Garth Brooks and Clint Black. Then she moved over to Southern Gospel. So we would sing Gold City, and I remember we we had a, a local radio station that played all those Southern Gospel groups, and I started learning parts, and I I just I loved it. I loved it. But I remember when we started listening to contemporary music, the first song really was a song called Home Run by Jeff Moore and The Distance. I I would call into this Southern Gospel radio station and ask them to do that song like every single day. I fell in love with the electric guitar and all that. And I guess I didn't realize that the influence of music in my life was already being moved toward my dad because when I would ride with my dad in, in the vehicle, like if we were going hunting and stuff like that, it was always classic rock. He was, well, I guess it wasn't that classic back then. Um, I guess it was just rock. Uh, but Van Halen and those kinds of, of songs, my dad listened to that that music. And so I saw this transformation of our music style because music's always been very important to our family. My dad plays bass, my mom sings, um, and uh, I led. I've led worship now for about twenty years, and I we have always been a musical family. Um, you could even see it in the aunts and uncles and everything. So we we've we've always cared a lot about music, and so when we started listening to contemporary music, it was very impactful. I, uh, one of the first CDs or albums, sorry, was it was tapes back then, um, was Michael W. Smith and For Him. And um, I could go through all of these things. We went to concerts, Reliant K and Skillet and Casting Crowns eventually. And music has always been very important in my family. And I saw that change. My dad really had a hard time stomaching Southern Gospel because it was it was a regular part of his childhood. So when we came to contemporary, I could just see that there was a, a new joy in music for him. And, um, it's a really cool thing that even to this day, me and my dad, we, we share the stage together on Sunday mornings. He plays the bass and I play the keys. And, um, it, it is such a joy. I know it won't always be this way, but I really get, I love getting to play music with him and any chance I get to sit down and sing with my mom, it's a blessing to my life. Music is a very important part of who I am. My mom and I used to sing all the time together, riding down the road. And it really formed a lot of who I was because of that. If I had to say, as far as like an object that me and my dad did growing up, it was hunting. My dad didn't take off. He didn't have a lot of hobbies, but hunting he did He did take care of and he did want to do. And so he would take me hunting. And things I learned going hunting with my dad was like, be quiet. Don't drag your feet. And so I had this quick story that I, I, I love sharing because it was um, it's, it's something that has impacted me, has kept in my mind. But I always felt like I was such a nuisance to my dad. I, I realize now it was just my my personality. But I I would always he yell at me, "Hey, be quiet, man! We're not going to see anything. And you know, stop dragging your feet. We're, why stop moving? You got to be quiet. You got to you got to stop moving so much." And I always felt like I was always annoying him so bad. But I 
the thing was I had to have like six or seven layers on just to stay warm. I didn't have no expensive Cabela's stuff. You know, I was layering like four different pairs of sweatpants on top of each other. So I looked like the little chubby Michelin man walking through the woods and I dragging my feet. I couldn't even pick, I couldn't even bend my knees. I had so much cloth on. I couldn't even bend my knees. So uh, I was trying really hard to swing my legs out so I wouldn't be so loud. And what I learned was that when he steps in front of me, if I stepped where he stepped, he'd already cracked all the, the leaves under his feet. And so I tried to start stepping as close as I could. I said, and also the thing was though, as, as I walked in his footsteps, when he would move a, a branch from in front of his face, it would swing back and hit me. And so what I had to start learning then was not only did I need to walk wider footsteps, walking in his footsteps, cause he's already broken the leaves. But also I had to walk really close to him so that when the, the branch swings, it swings past my head. And I have thought about that picture so many times in my relationship with God that the way to, to get where God's destiny is, is you gotta, you gotta walk in his footsteps and you gotta walk as close as you can. That's how you make the least amount of noise or at least the least amount of your own noise. And also, uh, in that you don't get hit by the branches that are swinging past you. Now that's a, that's just a picture for me that has been a blessing to think about my relationship with God and my relationship with my dad. He was so excited when I killed my first deer. I think I was like six years old and I, I've seen him over the years. You know, he spends time getting things ready. He he loves the work of baiting deer and, and getting everything ready for that. And I just, I have enjoyed those times with my dad as been times where we and him have actually had conversation and learned a little bit about life. And to this day, me and now my boys get to go hunting with him. And it was a big part of, of my life. Now, as I move forward through my childhood a little bit, I want to go into my early teen years. We had a Christian school at our church, BACA. And I remember early on thinking that if the Lord was going to call me to be a minister, I should start learning the Bible. And so I went to my parents and told them, like, I need to start going to the Christian school and at the time, they, there was no financial way that that would make any sense. But they they found how to do it, and they sent me to the Christian school when I was in third and a half grade. So at third grade, I started going to chapels weekly. I started learning scripture. I started learning history from a Christian perspective. Everything I did was kind of through the lens of what it would be to be a great Christian, uh, a good citizen according to the Word of God. And I believe this very much impacted my life. It changed the type of friends I was going to have. It changed my understanding of, of the Word and the presence of God. And being close to those believers, I don't know who I would be if it wasn't for the gift of BACA. And now I pastor the church that has BACA, and I get to have a lot of impact on uh, the direction of where BACA is going. And even my three boys are now attending the school that I grew up in, and I'm so thankful for that. When I was about 11 years old, I went to youth. You're supposed to wait till you're 12, but the way I kind of got in was somebody invited me to go on a missions trip to Mexico, and I went on my first missions trip, the first airplane ride of my life when I was 11 years old. And over there, I heard the song Friend of God for the first time, which is probably my favorite worship song. But I got to see what ministry looked like. I gave it everything I had while I was there. I gave it my all, and I started little bit by little bit learning that this was this was the place. This was kind of my destiny, that I, I wanted to be someone who taught others about Jesus the rest of my life. And God really began to form that and who I was. I knew from even when I was knowing, you know, my papa was a preacher, I wanted to be like him. So growing up, it was like, you know, I wanted to be an NFL player, and then I wanted to be a preacher, and then I wanted to be a NASCAR driver, and then I wanted to, you know, be a chef somewhere, and then I wanted to be a preacher. And it just seemed like it always kept coming back to ministry, but it was when I went to Mexico that things really got serious for me, that this is what I wanted to do the rest of my life. I had great youth leaders that took time to lead me, help me, to encourage me that let me serve, to let me belong. Uh, I was 11 years old in the youth group at the time. There was some you know, people that were 23 years old in there. <laughs> you know, It was really hard to relate to me and relate to them at the same time. But I'm so thankful to God for their kindness to me and, and including me and then take me on these missions trips. And the Lord really began to speak to my heart there at, and at youth conventions. And 
my my life was forever changed. Now, I'll say one thing else about me at this particular time in my life. I always kind of had a romantic heart. Like I was growing up in the Disney phase of, you know, Beauty and the Beast and The Little Mermaid and all these little love stories growing up. And so I, I was always wanting to just know that that part of my life was going to be taken care of. And I struggled with that, honestly. I struggled it really bad that, that I never thought that I'd actually find someone who would love me and I never thought I was worthy of love and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And I, I was struggling with, I remember 11 years old, like I would sometimes, my mom would have to come and talk to me as I was trying to go to sleep because I was so distraught that this person that I loved would never know that I existed. And it, there was just like a feeling of like, my destiny is never going to be as great as I want it to be. And my mom was very patient with me during that time. And I say that to mention, I, I look at my kids now, especially my oldest son, and he is struggling with the same thing. You know, he wants to see all those things come to pass now because he doesn't know if they're going to come to pass. And the truth is, do what you know is in front of you to do today, but leave all that other stuff into the future. Trust God with you. Trust your Lord with your future. And so as I wrap that up, I remember when I was about 11 years old also, there was a, a revival service we had, and an evangelist came to the school, and he preached a message talking about visions. He was talking about how God can give you a vision for your life. And I remember going to the front. He said, close your eyes, and I believe the Holy Spirit may give you a, a vision of something. So I, I remember 11 years old, 12 years old, kneeling down in the altar and just closing my eyes really tight and saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I vividly saw the church I grew up in. I vividly saw the church I grew up in. And another building, and and I just, I remember, and I, at the moment, it was just like, well, duh. I mean, I'm sitting in that room, so, you know, what's the big deal? But I, I remember thinking, like, okay, so I do know that whatever this picture was, and look, I'm not saying it was a vision. I'm not saying it's from God. It could have been just what was on my mind at the moment, whatever, but it's just crazy how God had that put together. If If that was the Lord, and I believe it could have been, if that was the Lord, what he was trying to reveal to me in that moment at 11 years old, that I would become the pastor of this church and that we have in the two years that I've been here, we've moved the church into the building that's right beside it, which is a gymnasium. And we've been doing ministry in there since because we're trying to build a new building, which was the other building that I saw in the vision. Look, I, I'm not telling you that that's what it was about. I'm just saying that there seems like a lot of ways that that could be confirmed in that way. And I know that no matter what age you are, God can start whispering to you about your destiny. There, You have a divine destiny. God has a plan for your life. He wants to prosper you. And if you really want to know what that is, seek him. Seek the Holy Spirit. You may not understand it, but when you start feeling something in your heart, like I did with that, that picture, you know, write it down. Remind yourself that he has a destiny for who you are. And if you will keep in step with him, and stay as close as you can to him. He's going to bring to pass everything he has for you, including all the dreams that you mentioned as a child. You know, I'd mentioned my mom listened to all the things I had said. She's heard hours and hours and hours of me believing and dreaming for the future, and she's seen them come to pass. You know, that's two things I want to mention to you. Number one, you're a person of destiny. Number two, you're around people who will become your legacy. Maybe there's somebody in your life that you, you don't need to right now think about your destiny. Maybe you need to think about listening to someone else's right now and seeing what you can do to help them make their right steps in their life. Because a person who's willing to come alongside you in your walk with God, that's a person everyone needs. Mm -hmm.